waiting or I could try that. Oh, sorry, sorry. My kids tutoring ran long and I was like, hey, I have to go. I have to go. I have to go. <laughs> I'm here now though. <laughs> so well, that uh, the vice president is going to be a little bit late, about 30 minutes. So again, my apologies. Um, trying to get people off the line was very painstaking for me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, we, we also heard that uh, Daya might not be able to join us tonight. Okay. So I, I think with six commissioners, knowing the vice chair is joining later, yeah. uh, we could probably get started. Good. So again, my apologies about that. All right. I have the agenda pulled up or call the order. Any, <laughs> I'm going to follow the agenda as is. Um, anybody from the public here that wants to make a speech? There is no one from the public here to speak. I will, I will say this. I don't know. Um, well, I'm going to say it anyway. I know that for the community councils, there is a letter circulating that is um, a lot of the community councils are are signing on for where they want us to take a very due consideration for considering city, uh, sorry, community council boundaries. Um, but no one has reached out to me. No one that I know of has been reached out to. And um, I think that that is a little bit silly, um, needless to say. <laughs> so I just kind of want to bring that up to the commissioners that I know that a lot of the community councils are overly concerned about the fact that they're, um, Boundaries are going to be messed with with uh, the city with us doing the redistricting. So, can I ask can I... a question, Chair? Yeah, please. Are they getting um, residents' input on that, or is it just the community council members who are creating this? What kind of feedback are they getting or input from the actual community? <laughs> Great question about that. So far, it has been done through the boards of the community councils in order to ratify whether or not to sign on or not. I And to that extent, the only thing that I know is that I don't know that they have actually had community input with that. But to be fair, I know that at least uh, Rose Park and um, not Liberty Wells, the one near the Granary District have started this conversation and that they're circulating a petition for us to to consider that. Now, what I when I when I say disingenuous about the concept of them doing this is the fact that all of our contact information is available. If they want people to present or they want us to talk about the work that we're doing and how we're considering this, they should reach out to us. And I know specifically because I live in Rose Park that the Rose Park Community Council has chosen not to contact me, but has, con has chosen to contact Joshua Bayo to talk about the process. So with that in mind, I just wanna make everybody aware that that may be something coming down um, that you may want to, to consider how you wanna present the information and what you wanna do with that um, if, if someone contacts you. So um, yeah, so no one's here from the public, thank you. And then uh, approval of uh, last, meetings, agenda items, and minutes. I'm sorry, I think so. Commissioner Cairo had his hand raised and I could oh, have sorry. Asked, so sorry. Thank you. No, please. Yeah, sorry, I, I'm not seeing anything. That was that was my question. So thank you for raising it. Thank you. Um do you want to go to the approval of minutes now? Is that okay? uh, Mr. Chair, we we don't have the minutes from the last meeting ready yet. Uh but you will see them next week. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll push that off until then. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't seen them. <laughs> Either have I. <laughs> I have seen know. the letter. It was sent. Oh. I do have a copy of the letter. Uh, and our community council, as we met last night, um, declined to uh, sign on to the letter as we are thinking of doing a little changing but maintaining what we have as you'll see tonight perfect perfect and maybe at the end of the meeting if you want to expound upon why you're declining or or that maybe we can talk about that but uh thank you for that i appreciate that so 
Um, okay, reports of the working group members. The most exciting part of this whole thing. <laughs> I would love to see uh, Vander. I forget. I'm sorry for your full name. Neil. Neil. My apologies. Neil Vandermost, if you want to go ahead and present first, I would love to see the maps that you have, if you can talk through them with us, and we can kind of go from there. So the floor is yours, Neil. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Eric. I'm going to share my screen and we will go from there. Um, let's see. Hopefully this works. Does everyone see the map? Yes. Okay. So um, I'm. I know the minute or the agenda has it in order of RD 2252, RD 2255, and RD 2259. Um, I feel most confident and most comfortable with 59 first, so I will go in sort of reverse order um, for how the the uh, the the uh, packet has it. So 59 is a three change map. Um, as I alluded to in the <clears throat> meeting last week, um, it shares a characteristic of the city's two change map in that it, um, it changes the border from of uh, district four and five from 900 South to 800 South. Uh, speaking personally, I, think this is actually a really strong idea. Um, 900 South has seen a lot of development recently and, and, and even since I moved here um, in you know, 2018. Um, and I think it might be nice to have the communities present on both sides of the street be in the same, uh, in the same city council district. And I feel like that is easily remedied by moving that district line up um, just one, one block over to 800 South. Um, the second change I made was to um, move the district line between districts three and districts four down a block from South Temple uh, to 100 South. Um, I'm under the impression that that already is done. Is that right? Slightly on the original map. Is that is that right? Here's the current district. Oh no, that's all the way through to to um, to the end of uh, of the blocks there. So this would move it down. Um, just the original line would be on South Temple. This just moves it down. I do bring it back up at 200 East because I feel like that preserves some of the characteristics of the downtown portion uh, between West Temple and 200 East. Uh, this is the Harmons City Creek and the City Creek Mall. Um, beyond that, that's, that is the second change. And then the third change involves this little bit here. Um, this is currently in District 3, um, and I proposed that we move this to District 2. Funny enough, this little triangle here has been the subject of a number of district changes. I noticed in last week's map that it is basically this is the same triangle here, <laughs> um, and it has been sort of traded between District 1 and District 3, and now the map proposes to give it to District 2. Um, I admit that is a, I would say, a bit kind of a shortcoming in this map. It's probably not very fun for the individuals that live in this triangle to have their districts change every 10 years, um, but it would create a balanced map um that has that is operating within the city's parameters additionally in terms of evaluation it has a compactness score of 39 percent it maintains the two district majority minority split and it has 31 block group splits so Curious. that is 59 okay. any questions on 59 <laughs> I jumped the gun there, but I will let anybody else ask questions before I ask questions. So my apologies. 
I don't know. Um, thank you for your presentation and thank you for your work on on this. Um, I have one question. So on 800 South, it would be the north side of 800 South would be one district, right? And then the south side would be another. Is your thinking that 900 South has more um, density on it currently? That's why it's a more fair moving it from 900 to 800? Um, density um, development, yes. Okay. Thanks for that. And then just, um, just, it's a comment. It's not a question, mm, but please. definitely that triangle in Rose Park is definitely, um, I would say that would be breaking up a community. I think that triangle is very much Rose Park and that's a very tight community. And so, um, that would just be my, my concern with that, but. And I wanted to add on to, to Marty's comments there as well. Like I noticed that in district one and district two, there is a negative deviation there. And I was curious about what considerations you brought into this in terms of like, um, and maybe you, you, you didn't think of this, but I think of this in the West side is like, there's a lot of movement towards the West side. There's a lot of growth in the West side and we're shrinking it down a little bit and not providing it a little bit more, um, to growth. And what I'm thinking about when I ask this is, uh, do you take into consideration that maybe we have a lot of children that are going to be in the next five year span to be voting members, et cetera, and so forth? What other considerations did you take in while you were doing these um, lines? Because you focused a lot on the fourth and fifth district, not so much on the first and second, so forth and so on. Um, I will admit that that is a weakness of the map. Um, that, um, and, and to be honest, I, I, that those factors did not factor into my consideration on drawing those lines. Um, as the district four member, my focus is naturally on district four. Um, but beyond it, um, yeah, uh, there, there, I, I, I firmly believe there is no one sort of perfect map. And so, yeah, that, that you're perfectly right. That that is a weakness of the map. No, no. And I, and I. My apologies for for saying that or implying that this was an imperfect map because that wasn't it. It was I'm obviously a West Side apologist and I very much advocate for the West Side. And I also think about in terms of the West Side growth, which a lot of the members that are probably on the East Side may have a passing familiarity or no familiarity with. And so I wanted to kind of address that concern because as I think about it into the future, because we're thinking in terms of a, a larger scale, like not now with the census, but maybe in five to 10 years, how would this actually look? And so that was, that was only my due consideration in the scheme. I'm just jumping on to affirm the comment about the uh, splitting the this uh, the triangle that has a very deep rooted uh, Rose Park feel to it. And, um, and so that, that, you know, that, that wouldn't go well, but I understand the need to move it. What, what, what also doesn't feel, it feels kind of odd is Poplar Grove, this little neighborhood, which I live in. It's, you know, that's a, <laughs> the little Euclid neighborhood. We're like, we don't know where we belong. So, I mean, by that logic, maybe that's the square where I would move, but at least that triangle, you know, uh, having grown in Rose Park, that to me is the heart of, of, of Rose Park. Debatable now that it's not early 90s, but you know. No, thank you. And I appreciate those comments. I admittedly am not familiar with that triangle. So it's really nice to be able to hear more about it. Um, maybe I should go visit there sometime. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a formal invitation to come. We'll <laughs> give you a tour. <laughs> we love it over here. <laughs> Us West Siders are very, very like very strong apologists for the West Side, but I really, I, I do want to say something positive, Neil, about your maps. I think they're very, very equitable. I think they're very thought out and very thoughtful to how you're looking at this. And I really appreciate the way that you stepped through things and have adjusted things accordingly to that. So, um, it, you, you've taken a lot of due consideration around how you're, you're being this. So I really appreciate that. 
Thank you so much. Um, are we okay all moving to 55, 22,255? It's a pretty similar map. I don't think it will take all that long. Um, when I was thinking about 2255, um, my thought process was just to, it's the, almost the exact same map, just ironing out a few little odd um, uh, remnants from the current district. And I'll admit, I, you know, I, I'm sure there, Ben can tell us a little bit about the stories about why they were drawn the way that they were drawn. Um, one thing I noticed, and that was here by the university, that there is this interesting little block group tango here. Um, not sure why that happened. So 55 irons that out. Um, the other change was that there is a split, is this? Yes, so there is, um, it moves, was it this block group? Yes, so it moves the block group from 2000 South, 2200 East. Um, it just uh, restores that. Um, I don't know. Is that right? Maybe that's not right. I know it. It it, it adds this yes to the entire district um, for for avenues, and then the last part. And I made this map before I knew that there was going to be conversation about this, but it is of course the little notch uh, on five and six, um, and the fifty five map smooths that out um, and just creates sort of, it just removes that notch. Um, just thinking about it more in terms of preserving block groups and, um, you know, just creating more compact districts. So, sorry if I'm doing too much talking, but so the little notch up by the University of Utah, can you, can you put the layer so we can see like the streets? So it I... is, I think here's the, the Huntsman Cancer. Here's the university. Mario Capecci is here. Price Family Holocaust Memorial Garden. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why this was drawn this way. It's kind of unusual. And it's this little like finger that you removed, right? Um, I uh, rem uh, I removed both the. Let's oh, see I see. I get this both both fingers. So this outcropping here, block ten ten, and block three o five uh, three thousand and five. I'm wondering if those are actual like University of Utah property, and that's oh. why it was put together that way, but um, I don't know if anyone else has a sense of of the U, but that's what I think. So we might be dealing with um, the frat houses and the sororities. I don't that think that area. Can we pull it up a little bit more so we can see the streets? Sorry. Yes. So Federal Heights is here. Medicals Drive is here. Yeah, that's about as, yeah. To I mean, me, I think this is all houses, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think that's uh, Greek Row. I think those are homes. I, as <laughs> for other analysis throughout the decade, I would request that we don't mess around with this goofy section because the census tracks align with that. And so you'd have a weird, I mean, none of our, None of our city council district boundaries totally align with the census tracks, but that provides insights into the community throughout the rest of the decade. So um, I would stick with whatever the weirdness is <laughs> campus that we're kind of, you know, have been dealing with because um, that aligns with other data sources. So Mallory, correct me if I'm wrong, but I actually part of the reason that it draws my attention is that the current map actually splits the census block. Um, so this is the block group for the current map, and it and it does split both 
block, this block group and that one, which is what, yeah, like I said, what, what, what drew my attention to it. I don't, I don't know why they chose to do that. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to see if we could add tracks as an overlay <laughs> on that had the university um, adjusted. Just, I mean, it's, it's like not related to electoral anything. It's more looking at the data later. <laughs> um, but I, the one thing with like blocks and block groups is they're kind of arbitrary and they can change every census. The tracks kind of remain consistent and so those don't change very much. So now we're getting into the weeds with nerd stuff, but um, so there, that could be part of why this looks different is because those can get realigned and they don't have to adhere to the 2010 um, boundaries at all. Mallory, if you could, uh provide more nerd stuff, I think we'd all be very appreciative of that. <laughs> because this is really excellent to know when we talk about the way that some of these boundaries are fluid. When I think about um, community council flat, uh, boundaries as being fluid, um, blocks as being fluid, but tracks are not fluid. And that will definitely give us an orientation about the way that we look at this. Yeah, um, also another fun tracked note. So the, I guess it's a fourth, fifth south, the kind of rounded road in the U area. There's a divide there now that got subdivided into two tracks. And then kind of over south, <laughs> south of my weird marmalade um, tract, um, that one got subdivided because of a lot of growth. So, I mean, that's not like a big, Big factor to consider, but um, just so you know that those two got changed because of the 2020 census population. It grew enough that it warranted um, subdividing those. So, if there are no more comments on 50, where are we at now? 50. Five is it? Um, I just I have one. Comment. Please. The the funky boundaries around the Jewish community center. Uh, there are equally funky boundaries with property ownership. Oh. So the University of Utah does own land to the east and south of the community center. So it kind of wraps around the community center. And of course, that community center has several programs that are working closely with the university and the hospital complex. So I, I think because of those property boundaries and the involvement in campus life, that was part of the reasoning it was included 10 years ago. So it's kind of being treated as campus. That would make a lot of sense. <laughs> Neil, I also want to point out None of this commentary is against your map. It is just uh, a fact finding mission, as it were. Yeah. No problem at all. Um, if there are no other comments, I'll present the last map. It's more of a food for thought as opposed to an actual position I wish to defend. Um, but I thought this could generate some discussion or maybe some thought process. Um, so this is 2255 makes a little, some, some more bold choices. I just sort of wondered why the university was with bench and not with avenues. Um, you know, obviously I'm sure there was a decision that was made, but I'd be very curious to know why that was. Um, the other ambitious change that it makes is extending district two across the 15. Um, you know, to be honest, I was sensitive about um, the vice chair's comment on how district five is kind of a hodgepodge of communities. He mentioned that last time around. Um, I think it, there's some truth to that. And so part of the thought process I had in kind of messing around really with this map was seeing how we could make District 5 a little more homogenous in character 
And part of that process was moving a lot of the um, industrial residential or sorry, industrial and commercial development uh, into district two, which has a number of that, or it has a lot of that already in its character. Um, the dividing line is actually the tracks line. Um, so that is the, the, the red, um, blue and green lines up to this point. So this little offshoot is a little weird. I think that's an old, um, an old rail line for freight, if I'm not mistaken. So it does You're curve correct. up. Yeah, so it does curve up there. But anyway, like I said, it, this is not really a map I wish to defend, but it just sort of gives you some food for thought on why we sort one thing into one district versus another and, you know, different lines that we could use so we're not always so dependent on the I-15 when we're making our, uh, when we're making our maps. That's really it for me. <laughs> Neil, when you were sharing that, what was coming up is, you know, they're saying, like, I was on, I grew up on the other side of the tracks. This makes it more literal. And it puts a lot of that industrial pieces into a neighborhood that is already, you know, not seen sometimes as a neighborhood. So that's a something that that comes up in terms of using the actual tracks as a, <laughs> as a boundary to separate, you know, uh, those neighborhoods. And historically, like we have always viewed I 80, I 15 as being the cutoff points for Poplar Grove. And I am intrigued and interested in the fact that you've pushed that beyond because we've always seen those as being natural boundaries. But one can make an argument that you, as you've made, that we can actually consider this part of District 2. And that we can, we can talk about this in a more homogenized fashion. When talking about characters and neighborhoods, so I, I was tickled pink to say the least to see this as a way of adjudicating a, uh, like, and looking at district 2 as being beyond I 15. You know, um, because it makes sense from a character building, like neighborhood building aspect. For sure. And I think it helps District 5, too, in the sense that it makes District 5 um, exceed, uh, more residential in, in character. If you think about the tracks line, a lot of what is on the east side of the tracks, it, it veers sort of towards this um, more residential character. I'm thinking about that stretch between the ballpark station and the 900 South station, right? What do you see on one side? What do you see on the other side? So I don't know. There, there's There's some some interesting observations there the I, one thing i'm oh, sorry are you sure um i think the one thing that you know there's the the tracks line but the, the railroad tracks um i would say that the majority of people who live on the east side of the train tracks are not coming west because the train is a literal barrier that you could just stay at for 20 minutes just to try to get home, right? So as far as like community, um, our, I don't know that it's like we are on the west side of the railroad tracks in community with the people on the east side, just because it's such an obstacle for like coming to the grocery store. I imagine people are heading east, because it's like it literally you plan your whole life around the train tracks when you live over here you're like do i go on 1300 or 4th so i can go over it or do i take a chance right like i have a whole mentality if the train's moving i wait it out if it stops i go around like i mean that's like 16 years of my life or this train situation so that is such a divider that i don't know that the folks on the east side of those tracks would want to come over and as we see density and growth you know it's coming west so it's at some point the train tracks are going to have to there's going to have to be a solution but um that's just my like take on that that i'm surprised that our line is actually ninth west because really my opinion is the west side is west of the train tracks like 
that's the west side um just because we're like trapped over here sometimes is how it feels <laughs> yeah it's it's interesting that you you mentioned that so i live you know maybe a mile away from the smiths there on 8 south and 9th west almost always i'm gonna go east to the marketplace not because i like like the extra two miles to get over there um it's just exactly that i have no idea if the train is going to be there and how long it's going to be there and going up to fourth and over is a pain because i live on ninth south so it's like i can go right here Going down to 13th, especially with all the construction on 3rd West right now, like that's not really an exciting, that's not something I'm looking forward to doing. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just be like, no, I'm going to Harmon's, I'm going to the marketplace. Like it's just not. <laughs> so I understand that, like, you know, I can, like, where I'm situated, I can actually hear both tracks, you know, so I know when the train is down there. Versus when I'm at the at the tracks line, you know, which is right over here as well. Like I can hear both of them. I think that's that, a, Oh, sorry, my apologies. Go for it. Go for it. It was an important. I was just gonna say, Marty, the words "Do I take a chance?" have never been so true. Like I think that's a really common, you know, experience. And uh, yeah, so there's some solidarity there. Yeah, and that that was I, I was gonna act. Uh, Sorry, excuse me, echo Daniel and echo Marty here in the fact that on the west side, we have a very, very rigid concept of the west side, and it's totally based on train tracks. And I loved Neil and I, and I'm speaking for myself here that you're expanding that concept outside of that because it provides an important breakthrough for us to not consider ourselves as being bounded by train tracks. But as you can hear us say, like, Psychologically, we always consider ourselves bound by train tracks. You either are with the train or you're against the train. If you're against the train, you're 20 minutes against the train. <laughs> like, this is something that Westsiders constantly think about. And having, uh, like, I spent 10 years in Poplar Grove. I'm in Rose Park now. I love the West Side. I constantly am worried about, am I going to hit a train? <laughs> do I have to go on 13th? Do I have to go on 6 North? Like, what bridge do I have to cross? Or am I, or am I going to like chance it by getting across the train tracks? Like very interesting stuff for us at least. So, and it becomes more of a problem like as you go a little bit north, because since it crosses over South Temple, like you know, so if you need to go up into like the Fair Park area, you kind of in the same issue. It's like, ah, like. How long is it going to take me to get over to Red Iguana tonight? Is it going to be like a 10 minute drive or is it going to take me a 45 minute drive? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Out of all the maps that you presented, Neil, that last map, uh, <clears throat> interesting. And I really like it because it actually um, feels culturally more like what I would imagine the West Side doing and the way that we, the way the city has talked about the West Side, the way um, the Salt Lake Tribune and the Deseret uh, News has talked about the, the West Side, which is like, it's expanding and growing and we're, we're actually showing that through the city council. So thank you for presenting that. My pleasure. And I would just like to add, if none of you other commissioners are watching, Eric's, um, our chair's visual reactions to maps, you are literally missing out on some really good entertainment. <laughs> Do I really wear my heart on my sleeve like that? <laughs> Eric, I've known you for like six years. You know, just see his face and don't let him continue. <laughs> Yeah, truth, truth be told, I wear my hat on my sleeve. I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh yeah, it's like spurring ideas, like very excitable uh, human being. So yeah, Neil, thanks, man. That was that was awesome. And thank you for stepping us through your thought process and like um, giving us an idea of like how, you, how you've positioned that. So that was actually really, really great. All right. So we've gone through Neil's uh, redistricting maps and now, and 
please go ahead and present the maps that you want to go ahead and present. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you. Okay, now, Ben, how do we do this? I will screen share Anne's map, which is delightfully titled Politely Compact. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the change that I have suggested only deals with the edges of um, District four, 5 and District 6, actually. And, and in looking at the map that was one of the original ones that had the least boundary, you know, the least changes. Um, this map, sort of this one change, kind of fit into um, that, making the, again, the least amount of change from the current boundaries. And what I did was to take out I don't know how to show you. I don't have a mouse, uh, an arrow. You can see where the blue line was and where we have extended it to uh, 17th South and made the line straight down 1500 East, 17th South, 1300 East, 1300 South and taken out what essentially was a block that included Westmoreland Place. Now, in doing that, um, we kept things that were important to um, the District 6 and District 5 in our community council, particularly. Um, there were five things that um, seemed important. Uh, it's 3% more compact. Uh, we had to make changes in District 5. Uh, and in District 6, we could use fewer voters, so we did that. And there were then more voters in District 5 um, and we kept our two council representatives, which we have found very advantageous to us in the past 20 years. Um, it, however, split a commercial node on 15th and 15th, and we didn't see that as a detriment. It also allowed two council persons to either be in favor of whatever that district might wish to do or that commercial node, excuse me, or we would have only one in the camp. Um, chances are, at, so far, we have never had two in opposition. Frank, can you zoom out a little bit so I can understand what Ann is talking about? Thank you. So our 15th and 15th node is between Emerson and Kensington right here. Oh, I don't know how to show you where that is. I, I have, well, I can't speak to <laughs> else, but I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that little 15th and 15th node right there. We have other commercial nodes, but that one would be split. And we don't see that as a negative. Um, so those are the rationales um, that, it, 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 in terms of percentages, it gave more compactness to District 5 by 4%. And we had 3% more compactness. 
Can I ask a question, Ann? Yes. I'm just curious. Sorry, adding it up for a quick minute. I'm curious as to the the reason when you say you don't see that splitting of uh, 15th and 15th as uh, conflicting. I'm just curious as to um, how you all got there. The reason behind that. Well, we have had two representatives, one from District Five Council representatives from District Five and District Six for the past 20 years. Uh -huh. Okay. And so we have found that to be in our favor as in terms of a community council. And we have had no objections from the community councils which surround us, which are either in District 5 or in District 6. So at this point, the persons I have heard from in our community are in favor of keeping the two district council representatives and in meeting some of the needs of the redistricting we have made it a little more compact for both districts thank you i appreciate that i have another question for you are you looking at this map as being solely focused on districts five, six, and seven, because I noticed a huge disparity with districts one and two, where you really lowered the count there. And are you looking just to keep, is your sole focus on keeping the community council boundaries in mind versus more equitable distributions and other considerations that you have? Because it sounds like that. I, I just want to be clear about that. I, I <clears throat> the, the map that, I was looking at was the map that showed the least changes for any of the districts as they are presently drawn. But District 2 has negative 2,000. And so right. I don't know if that is. Well, I didn't, I did not um, attempt to change any other boundaries for other districts beyond that map which had the fewest changes that was presented and made by the city i i don't know yeah the, the districts 1 and 2 start lower than it's 2000 residents in district 2 lower than the ideal um district and so that's that's what's going on there that's not um Population loss. Mr. Chair. Okay. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to add the PDF in today's meeting packet is zoomed in to these changes to Wasatch Hollow, where District 5 and 6 meet. And when Ann and I were talking about this map, uh, one of the ideas was that these changes to these borders could be looked at as a component that could be added to other maps. So it's not necessarily the, the whole map, it's these specific changes and whether it's something the commission would be interested in looking at adding to other maps that have also been looked at. Got it, thank you for that clarification because that was gonna be my next question is, uh, to Mallory's point about it's already negative 2000 and it's not adjusting those adds credence to what um, Anne was doing and that that helps clarify that. So thank you. Thank you for that clarification. And just that insight that we have had to having uh, two council representatives has been a positive in our 20 years of experience. So as you change and adjust other districts to be more equitable in terms of their population, that might be something you could consider based on our experience.
Sorry, so I'm just, looking between yeah. the two maps here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so, let me, bear with me. Oh, no worries. I, let me just get this out and I hope it's okay. I don't, as we move forward with this, I don't know that the, the logic of, of wanting to move or advocate in this way for two representatives feels <laughs> almost equitable, right? Like it just, it, 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 it that it's, it, Anyway, it's not quite landing for me, so I'm, I'm processing that piece, right? So the logic that we use to rational this based on deviations in populations, that that feels uh, like a more fair process than trying to keep two representatives that have worked for this particular area for 20 years. Um, so I just I just wanted to voice that. Okay. They always they aren't always you know you don't have the same representatives over that period of time and and and, and, and i get that i'm just thinking as to how we you know how we offer you know reason and logic for for how we argue some of these i just really needed to note that at least you know having two councilmen in the pocket for a particular neighborhood interest just doesn't sound fair to the rest of of the of the city And I, I would echo that concern here is that we are trying to make it a more equitable and fair city in relationship to population growth. And I understand that it's very difficult and I understand that there are myriads of concerns around the way that we consider this community councils, um, natural boundaries like mountains, rivers, et cetera, man-made boundaries like uh, railroads and then population growth. And I think that with this 2020 census, we want to consider a lot of the population growth and the way that we want more equitable distribution for the way that we consider our city. So, and I, I, I feel a lot of the similar, uh, the same feelings that Daniel does in regards to the way that this is um, looked at, um, because it doesn't take into consideration other, other council boundaries, at least the way that I'm looking at it. Well, I didn't make any other changes, uh, and I was basing it on the map that had the least changes for all, uh, which is the minimal change map, which had the least number of changes for all districts. And I would argue that that favors the east side a, a lot. <laughs> Um, because that's 10 years ago and that that's a very minimal change. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something to consider when thinking about the entirety of Salt Lake City proper. And I think that's certainly important. But in all the maps, you know, everyone was cutting us off without consideration for we as a community and what we have been, just like your thinking of expressing ideas about um, the heart of Rose Park in the Little Triangle um, for a reason that that community would remain whole and having the dividing line as such, it's still 15th East is a dividing line. It already is. It's like your railroad track. We don't get a lot of people coming across 15th East to come east. It's very interesting. I, I would say that there is a big difference between a railroad line and 15th East. Of course. East. And I would I'm also, just, yeah, sorry. I'm just saying there are similarities, but not so much perhaps in magnitude as you're expressing. I would also want to point out that part of what I what I envision, and again, this is not a knock on you, this is just kind of expressing how I'm envisioning uh, more equitable maps to go, is where is the population going and why is the population going a certain direction? And the West Side is going to be getting more than its fair share of a population growth and boom, and mm -hmm. I am trying to consider as we think about the east side and the west side, how this, how these kind of population distributions are going to be equitably examined 
and to get the most benefit, uh, not beneficial, but the most representation from our city council uh, representatives, you know, and when I think about when, I, when I'm saying that, I think about fair park that is split between um, three different city council representations. And I would like to see that more equitably dis uh, distributed and to be more clarified in the way that we're thinking about where's the population going. And we want to think about also economic distribution. If we think also about um, the inland port that is focused on the west side, I would like to kind of consider that within this as well. Again, not a knock on your map. It's just saying that there are there are other things that we want to consider and not just 20 years of a community council when we know that over the past three to five years, we've seen a huge influx of people coming into Salt Lake and a huge population boom. Um, I believe when we started, uh, we had to be, I mean, I'm, I'm with you in terms of our thinking needs to be progressive in terms of the future, but we were supposed to be basing this on 2020 census and not considering the future. I believe Eric asked us about that the first time in our thinking that we know it's going to, we see what's happening, but we have to base our information on the the 2020 census. I think that's where this gets a little tricky because that core of the growth has been the area like basically just east of I-15 and the east part of the community has not seen intense growth. Some of those census right. at least have decreased. So, you know, I think that's where the balance gets really difficult. But yeah, we're not supposed to look at the projections into the future. Um, but it puts it puts more people on the west side, um, you know, kind of west of State Street at least. So um, it's a different. And that's where there's room to been. grow. So I don't quite understand the the rationale for being so um, strict about not considering the future. Well, that, that's exactly my point is I, I want to consider the future and I also want to understand too and balance out dynamics such as underrepresentation uh, in the census and also trying to see, because again, our mandate is that this city council redistricting is for 10 years. And I can't help but consider where things are going to be and try to be as equitable as possible within the mandate that we have and the remit that we're trying to accomplish. So again, I like the way that you're considering this map and you're trying to make more uh, equitable distributions, but I do wanna point that out where I'm considering this as we think about the entirety of the Salt Lake City redistricting for city council maps, so. So it could just be a part of the consideration as we continue I agree. to, to uh, balance the population. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's um, a valid point, right? Like any map that is submitted will be considered, right? And then like we have this really difficult decision of which one or which three we move forward to the council, um, right? That's the, but I think all ideas are welcome. And then we will have the really hard decision of which map is really represents the best, most equitable boundaries. We, cer we certainly haven't necessarily, I mean, we can combine maps. We haven't had any one map that is right yet, we're having to take pieces of all maps that are considered and apply those um, qualifications and, and create yet a map or two 
that would be meeting those needs. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. And I think this is the, the part of the, I mean, it, it's worth mentioning this about the commission. This is where we tussle with hard decisions. We have to, we have to say how we, we consider this. We have to explain and explicate our decision making. And we have to consider how others are also viewing this because like you had said before, Anne, in the last meeting, you come from the east side, you don't really know the west side, like boundaries, culture, city council, or, sorry, community councils, et cetera, and so forth. And what we're bringing up is other viewpoints and we're, we're trying to figure out what parts of these maps do we keep? What parts of these maps do we discard? How do we view these maps? And can we cobble together something that is going to be something that we can all advocate for? And if we don't all advocate for it, we can at least say, here, here is the due consideration that was given to this with these caveats brought out by the commissioners. And I think that this is an important place for us to discuss this and to kind of grapple with how we feel that the commission should go with whatever particular map that we're going through. So I love that we're having this discussion and it's it's super important for us to consider that as we start to kind of draw out and winnow down the particular maps that we're gonna advocate for the city council or advocate to the city council, I should say. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> to that extent, and do you have any other maps that you were gonna show or is this the- No, one? no, okay. this was the only one I had worked on. Fair, okay made any change to <laughs> <laughs> fair 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 and thank you again Anne, for for sharing your map with us and kind of stepping us through your thought process like super helpful as always as we start to kind of like think through and consider what we're gonna bring to the city council so um if there's nothing if there's no other comments for any of the maps that we've had if you had the weight of the staircase for either Neil's or Anne's maps um, feel free to to have us draw our attention back to those maps. Let's discuss those. This is what we're here for. Um, anybody have any other other comments? I just think we need to keep drawing. Yeah. <laughs> and I agree with you. <laughs> I've got a question. Yeah. Um, for those in the Fair Park Community Council area, so it looks like the boundary of that um, goes over to 5th West, and then there's a little pocket down to kind of gateway. Is there a lot of active involvement from that group in that square? Because I'm trying, I don't, I'm also trying to navigate all of these community councils and stuff, and I feel like, you know, I go on a run down there and it feels I'm curious. Sorry. Can you can you give me the coordinates again? Because I I live in that square. I think that you're talking about, which is we call ourselves the Euclid neighborhood. I think you're talking okay. about Euclid. So it's is... between Fifth West and like Sixth or no Seventh West and Fifth North and North Temple. That's more Guadalupe neighborhood, maybe a little bit behind. Oh, that. maybe yeah. Yeah, it's some of it is. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, what's what's the question, Mallory? Well, I'm just like looking at the um, previous boundaries with districts one and two, and how they kind of chopped Fair Park in half. I'm trying to workshop what would be um, amendments that would make sense, and so I'm just wondering. If it would make sense to cut into right now, what is district 3 for that um, area and lump it, make sure fair park is all together. Um, I just don't have a good understanding of that community council itself. I think is, is the thing. Are you able to share your screen Mallory? Or are you looking I'm at on another? another <laughs> okay. I have my maps logged in on the 1 computer to pull up Webex. So. Um, but if we can, maybe I can just. Could Ben, are you able to pull up? I think that's district 1, right? And two. I can certainly screen share. That would be great. I, I'm thinking 2 things. I have a map of the community councils. 
but they're the registered with the city community councils. So the Euclid neighborhood, the Guadalupe neighborhood, they're not registered with the city, so they wouldn't be on this map. I can put that one up, and if that's not as helpful, we can switch to maybe Google Maps or something else. And that might be why we always hear like the bastard children of Salt Lake City, like we just don't belong anywhere. <laughs> And I, I feel you because like Papa Grove has wanted to take on Euclid and Euclid has kind of been in this very weird position. I, I get that. <laughs> so, yeah, the area that I'm kind of asking about is that farthest east part of Fair Park. So then the black and yellow line is the city council district. Okay. Correct. Trying to get my bearings on where the railroad, where the freeway, where those natural boundaries are. The railroad is kind of west. Eastern boundary and the freeway is the western of that two block wide segment. Um, you've got the railroad and the freeway. The railroads are shown, but it, it, it's not super obvious. It's, it's this line where it has a kind of, it has like a slash across it every now and then. So you can see it running north and south, but then you can also see the east and west tracks running over, over here. So, in terms of, well, I mean, the questions about city council, right? How they fit, but in terms of like neighborhood identity, that is around that water Jackson Guadalupe neighborhood, which is very connected to cultural and identity wise to Fair Park. And some might even still call themselves Rose Park, right? So, move over to the, to the um, district three would feel would, would be different. Yeah. Yeah, um, I was say, having I the this. same, the same. I, love, oh, I was going to say that I love this old timey like plot map with the GIS lines on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to support that, that I think there's definitely. Um, when it comes to like neighborhood and community interest, this. This particular section, I definitely. I think it's very established and um, I think like uh, an organization that's in this neighborhood, NeighborWorks has put a lot of time and energy into building community and working here. So yeah, I do, I think it would need to stay together for sure. So does that Fair Park community, do you think there's an affinity for District 1 or District 2? If it was getting combined finally and represented by one district, do you think? I, I think one, really Daniel more. and Eric. I don't know what you think. That would be my vote. Would be one. Would be a more of a natural fit over with Rose Park, but uh. yeah. And I I would say that only. Sorry, Daniel, to cut you off. Uh, I would only say that because of the railroad tracks lead more towards like the Rancho Market Rose Park area and they're not contiguous with the the boundaries that Public Grove has set. Yeah, uh, District two, sorry. District yeah. two. I, I would say that and then we would have to look at what that would mean in population since we're also getting a lot of folks moving there. Yeah. But I mean the natural almost the, like the natural boundary and I don't know if this captures it here. That's North Temple. So I would even say that I would move Fair Park and even get move all the way up until um, I-80, right? So that I-80 becomes the divider. And then on the one side of I-80, you have District 1 and on the other side, District 2, um, because it, it, it feels like some switches. So that, that would feel like using some natural boundaries. I don't yeah. know the impact on population. Also, yeah. an argument, yeah. Um, when I was drawing my maps, I was trying to do something like that. And there are, there's a lot of people in this, yeah. these fair park blocks that make that very difficult. And actually when I drew my map, even 
this little sliver here where the KOA is along the river. That's yeah. one of those that I had to like sort of move. Like when I was trying to keep the dis the fair park together and keep it in one district, I had to cut that KOA out because even that caused it to be too many people. Yeah. I, okay. I, I would consult. I would want to consult with my my Euclid neighbors. You know, we're like we have our own identities, like Texas. So yeah. we would. I would consult. Would want to consult with them because it almost seems you know to to balance for population. I wonder if pulling down or, or pushing west the Salt Lake City to maybe um, the Salt Lake City district. What what is the brown? I don't know what the brown is. Uh, a four. A four pulling down District Four to come past I fifteen up to nine hundred west. Uh, and maybe gather some of those neighborhoods or even all the way up to 10th West would maybe uh, address some of that, but that might be too much moving. Yeah, well, I would also consider this that KOA is highly, highly um, transient in, mm -hmm. in some respects. So, like, it, it is really not a permanent residency, even though the, the, the population is very dense. Transitory locations do get counted in the census, so technically that you're right. You have to consider, yeah. even though that population is changing, they are part of you know. If anyone wanted to sue on our maps, like that would be included population. So I um, wanted I want to very much echo Mallory's point. Like uh, whatever I just said, Mallory's point takes precedence. <laughs> They were harder to count in 2020, but it's, you know, those thousand people or whatever. Is. I, and, and actually, I, I think there's an argument to be made that that's actually changing, at least in this particular area. There's a lot of people who are being pushed out and other folks are coming in and buying homes, right? So the transitness is part of rental, um, which is being sold left and right, and they're demolishing also houses. So when we're, we're not looking to the future, but thinking about it. That's something to consider, right? We tip our hats to our transient neighbors. <laughs> um, no, good, very, very good points to consider with within all of this for sure. So, oh, I do declare like uh, a lot to consider as we're looking at these maps. Whew. <laughs> I'm wondering if any other commissioners would be interested in like a field trip to some of these lines to kind of look at like, because I do think in other parts of the city and I know Salt Lake City very well, like I've lived in lots of parts and I've had jobs that take me to them. Like, so I can visualize almost everything we're talking about. But when you're talking about the West side and this need to change district two, um, the community of interest is just such an important piece that we can't minimize. Um, it's just, it's unlike in a lot of other parts of the city. Um, and um, so I don't know if anyone's interested in like, you know, going and kind of like seeing this weird triangle piece that's in Fair Park and, um, and really like what the railroad tracks do and and maybe I'm not thinking, you know, um, broadly enough, but like, I think. The natural divide is the, the railroad tracks and not ninth west, you know, like, I think my neighbors and community members who live like around welfare square are a part of my community, not another community. And so, like, to have that division is troublesome to me. So I don't know if, you know, these kind of these hard places with four and two that we need to work through, if anyone's interested in just a scouting adventure to, to see what it is that we're impacting, right? Because I don't know, I'm a visual person. So for me, that just like really helps me. Yeah. I would, love, I would love that Marty. And I would enjoy yeah. the opportunity to, uh, participate. I want to bring people around because I love the West side. And I also want to point out to, to Daniel's point too, like Euclid is very, very unique within the situation. Yeah. They, they don't have, uh, they're, they're, they don't have adequate representation for, for what they are and where they're situated within this 
whole concept of community councils, et cetera, and so forth. Um, and it, I think it's very important to kind of point that out and to see what they're actually dealing with when we talk about the Euclid neighborhood. Um, I will bring yeah. out tea and cookies for you all to experience the 27 homes in our little neighborhood. So, or 24, you know, going down because they keep breaking them down. Uh, I would be down for uh, I would be down for a field trip. It also depends on when. I'm a little on capacity and time, but I think that's a really great suggestion, Marty. In terms of like, we got to really see with the impacts uh, of the neighborhoods that we're making. So I definitely want to affirm that. And I love Daniel that you're here with us because really, like, even though I've lived over here for so long, like, I can't speak to Euclid at all. I didn't even know, like, this issue with representation existed. That's my ignorance on that. So I'm just so glad that you're that you're here and offering. Yeah. Should we do it like an old fashioned doodle poll where we um, try to figure out our schedules or? I love that old fashioned now is doodle pull. That's how fast <laughs> technology is changing. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah, I'm I can it. make myself um, available. So. I think is there a, is there a Thursday that sorry, and I haven't looked at the schedule. because I was out of town last week, but is there a Thursday where we didn't end up meeting that maybe we can hold time or can we have an in person meeting while we're driving? We didn't have, um, we, we scheduled, so we missed the 1st, so we had the 1st 1 and then we skipped the next week and then we sort of scheduled the next 3. And uh, next week, I'm going to be in New York city. So I, I'm out all next week. <laughs> but I'm going to still be here in, in like for the meetings and stuff, but. And because this is a public and open meeting, I mean, we can't go to an in-person on the road situation, right? Because we need, if there's any public input, we need to be. So I wonder if we want to do like a, dare I say a Sunday morning <laughs> or um, another evening. Wait, and can someone remind me when we have to have this done by? It's uh, April, right? Like it's- so that, is, that is a great reminder. But <laughs> Kind of working backwards, so the council's deadline is May 10th, and the council wants to have at least one public hearing, possibly two. So the public hearings would be probably on May 3rd mm -hmm. and April 19th, oh, and they would want to have the first discussion of their maps that are recommended by the commission on April 12th. So we have a meeting on the 31st next Thursday scheduled. And if there's interest in scheduling an April 7th meeting, we can set that up as well. But that's probably as late as the commission can go and still meet the council's timeline and the state law deadline. I mean, I would, I would make a motion for when we already have Thursday, we've seen this, this time block and day seems to work. So maybe scheduling on the 7th, if we can do that. Hopefully weather will also be nice. But yeah, that's too late. To do, it's too late for us to make decisions about what we would find out. We need to visit the, your communities immediately in order for us to be able to understand have time to understand what you're telling us about boundary lines and community councils and uh, communities of cohesion that you're trying to save. Um, <clears throat> so I mean, I can't, I can't see that we have time to waste. We have to function immediately. Yeah, it does seem like there is a little bit of urgency. I mean, is anyone available like tomorrow, this weekend? Um, how much time do we think we need to do? We could pinpoint like Eric, Daniel, and I, um, and the other Eric, if you want, well, we could be like, okay, here's the four spots. Like mm -hmm. we could even create a map and people could go on their own if they're not available. Um, so that we're not just wandering the streets, you know, like we have, like, here's the points. 
where we need to make some boundary lines and here's what um, we want you to notice. I don't know. Yeah. Now just rambling. Sorry. No, you're, you're, you're fine. I, I mean, I'm available. I'm here all weekend and I'm available sort of after three ish tomorrow. So if, if anybody wants some time, like I have no other plans this weekend and except to be as outside as much as possible <laughs> because it's going to be in the mid 70s. So <laughs> I could make tomorrow afternoon after 530 work for maybe an hour, hour and a half. Um, I'll have to, the nephew is going to have to tag along. It's um, on, I'm on uncle duty. I could also make Saturday yeah. afternoon work. Sorry. Sorry. This is Michelle. I'm with the recorder's office. I'm doing your minutes. If you guys at any point join as a quorum, you have yeah. to announce it as a meeting and there has to be a long enough period of time that we can do that. And then a recording of that meeting has to happen. So the logistics of you guys doing that is very difficult. What if we don't have a quorum, Michelle? What if we just go in like two or three? Yeah, if two or three of you go and do it, or you do it individually, four. it's up to four. Yeah, you can do up to four. But if in four. Point, there's five of you in that location, the public meeting web, public meeting rules fall into play, and we can be held liable for that kind of stuff. I can wear a GoPro on a hat if you need to. <laughs> well, what we could do though is we could do like um, a couple times where it could be like we decide these are the points and like. I could go with a group. Eric Lopez could go with a group. Daniel could go with a group, right? Like, and be like, we agree on these are the places that we want you to see and understand. And then these are the times and then people could sign up and we just make sure it's under four people for each group. Does that make sense what I'm proposing? Yeah. yeah. And are, are, is this a physical, um, experience or is this a virtual one it would be an in-person experience i think mm -hmm. unless I've, anyone has an idea a sense of how to do it virtually yeah. i guess your gopro is the way air clip has i prefer the in person but i am not available until monday until monday and monday i'm available all day one suggestion um i've seen the council do this on occasion when less than a quorum goes to say a conference or a fact finding on the ground kind of visit, sometimes they will do a report back to the full body at a full at a meeting at a public meeting. So if there are one or two subsets less than a quorum of the commission that does meet at the next meeting on the March 31st, it could be an agenda item for you to report back about what was discussed and what you thought was important to share. Okay. Should we get a sense to that point, how many here are interested in joining? So we just know, and we're missing one commissioner, right? So can you, can someone see everyone? So. Mallory, you're so you're a no. I'm interested, but I'm gone this weekend, so I could take the report. Or if I get some notes from you all, I am really close, so I can go explore next week when I've. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, so we're at a quorum, so we need to split up. Okay. Um. Or, like, I can tap out. And trust others, you know what I mean, to like lead it. Or Eric Lopez, you're out of town. So we could just go when you're not available and you make sure we hit some certain points. But I do feel like you're a passionate West Sider. So I would like you to be there if you're um when are you, back, yeah. when are you when are you back, Eric? I'm back uh April third, that's Sunday, and then I'm free that next uh, wait, wait, wait. No, are you you're are you gone this weekend? Yeah, I'm gone uh, Saturday after 5 p.m. Until the 7th of April. Uh, let me double check that. April but yeah, 3rd. I can do, I, I'm free all tomorrow. Okay. No, I'm back until uh, I come back on the 3rd of April. Okay. So how um, many are available tomorrow evening? 
this guy. I am. This is my whole bread and butter. Three. And four, I'm oh, what if I just stay in my house and neighborhood and take you all around? I mean, if Euclid is that small, like, <laughs> like, like, here's our block. Find so, the wiener schnitzel, go down that road, go into yeah. all the other things. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, well, nobody knows that there's a neighborhood here. So Eric, Eric and Neil could go tomorrow night. And then. Yeah, I'd have to check with my wife first, but okay. <laughs> Dude, I'd love to go with you, Neil. I think that would be so rad. I would love to see the east side in your eyes. I'll close my eyes and you just describe it. And then you do the same over the west side. <laughs> and then I could go with Anne on Monday and Daniel. Can you do Monday evening? Yeah, I get done teaching around. I should be home around 630 or 6, 6, 615. And how does that sound for you? That would be fine. Uh, could we maybe do something before if he's showing us just one small portion? Could well, we Daniel, see... what's your preference? Do you want to see like all of the same things that we're looking at together? No, you all can start and then we can just meet in Euclid and I can just, you know, share uh, some of the concerns, the areas of development, some that you can't see right now, just to kind of think. Okay. See where we're at. So, and the earliest I could do is like 5.15, 5.30. All right. Okay, so how's this? I will communicate with Anne offline and Daniel, and we will set our, um, Daniel, Eric, and myself will get our points of interest mapped out. So let's do that. And then Eric, sorry, I'm being so bossy, you guys. This is... This Boss is around. I am. <laughs> Boss away. <laughs> I'm like, just let me be in charge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Neil, Eric, and Eric can, or Neil, is it Neil, Eric, and Daniel? Daniel, you're like a part of it, but you're also like just so, going to be like, this is the street so that we don't so get let into Let me clarify. Quorum. So, Michelle, is it? Up to four, or is it once we hit four, we're at quorum? So once you hit five, you're at quorum. So, okay. okay. So if we had four, we're okay. So it sounds like I can come out and walk with you all. Okay. So okay. that, you know, I won't be a weirdo, like, you don't know me. So, you're like peeking out the door, be like, go up there. I'll send my husband. I'm like, go, go to walk him over to the late development. So. <laughs> So does that sound like a plan? Then we get it like timely, we get there and then we have time to learn and then like revisit and do maps based on what we've seen or at least have a discussion where we all have a visual idea of what we're talking about. I think that's great. I, a great idea. I, okay. I really like this. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Thank you for Pretty coordinating. Good. You should come to all my meetings, please. <laughs> How much longer are we gonna talk? Let's just get some action steps. <laughs> Mallory's been in meetings with me. She knows it gets a little bit much. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So maybe I'll send an email to Eric and Daniel, Eric Lopez and Daniel, and then tonight we can just kind of, I think we're probably all on the same page about where to, to look. Yeah. And then, um, and I will send you information for where we can meet and just plan accordingly. Cause you might run into a train. <laughs> Give yourself time. <laughs> you are going to experience taking a chance. <laughs> the worst is when it's stuck both ways, and then you yeah. really can't go any direction. Like, or they start oh, to been... reverse. Yeah. 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 Oh, geez. Oh, Pete. Yeah. I've I've done the very very dangerous thing of jumping the train when I've been walking because I'm like, this is I can't. Like, I got <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Both that like on public record, it, Eric Kenny. <laughs> as a as a as a youth, right, Eric? <laughs> yeah, as a youth for sure. When I was twenty years teenager. ago. Yeah, good. That's what I heard. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. I'm well, done. Uh, thank you. And uh, we should go to pending and unfinished business. <laughs> If there is no other commentary that people want to to include here, oh, to declare. Um, <laughs> could I ask a question to the city officials on the meeting? Um, is there anything we need to know involving quorum or public records about doing something like mm -hmm. having a chat room or some instant messaging or emails between us if we want to cooperate um, outside of the bounds of this meeting? 
Good question. The, the means of communication is really secondary. If a quorum of this body is having a policy discussion about what is within your powers, then that should be part of the public record. So if that's a group text, if it's instant messaging, whatever it may be, if five of you are together and discussing redistricting, that should be part of the public record. Now, if the five of you all show up in the produce section of the same grocery store and you don't talk about redistricting, you're fine. Okay. If you're at a party together and you don't talk about redistricting, you're fine. Okay. So it sounds like we need to meet up at the at Scion Cidery to, you know, <laughs> discuss cider and <laughs> <laughs> No, we're transparent. We don't need any secret meetings. <laughs> no, we don't need. I wasn't saying it was a secret meeting. I was saying okay. we should go to the cider and have cider. <laughs> yeah, talk no, about that, our dogs. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so that's a really great question, especially in regards to what we were talking about now, and um, it may be worth pursuing. And maybe it's this, this is something I want to bring up now to the rest of the commissioners. Um, based on Neil's suggestion here, would it be would it be beneficial for people to have like a Slack channel for us to kind of talk more fluidly and also put it on the record for everybody as we're thinking about these issues and we want to to talk to other district leaders that are here in the commission. You know, again, I I make no bones about the fact that I'm just uh, representing District One. I know that Marty's representing District Two, and we we seem to to me to understand everybody's district needs and some of the cultural and other issues that we're, that we're going for. And so uh, I, I guess that's what you're going for, Neil, right? I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, absolutely. Yeah, to, to have a expanded forum for discussion. In particular, I'm thinking compromise maps. That might be something that needs a little more time than just two hours in, in the bounds of this meeting. And I also think it's worthwhile to, to to piggyback on what Neil said, there are a lot of other maps from other members of the communities that we just don't discuss. We're discussing commissioner maps, but I know that Haley Lee, Alejandro Pugh, et cetera, have also put up maps and it'd be worth the commissioners to look at and say, do we want to review those in an actual meeting or do we want to not pay attention to them? So forth and so on. So I, I would like to proffer a motion to can I can I do that, Ben? Within the bounds of what we're doing, can I proffer motions? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to proffer motion. I'm going to proffer motion that we start a, uh, well, at least that we we figure out what communication channel, but at least something like a Slack, a Telegram, a text message, for us to go over those and really start to dive into those outside of these meetings. What do you guys What do you guys use at the city? What What's your like, talking back and forth? <laughs> Uh, in the city, we use Microsoft Teams. Okay. Hey, I love Teams, and nobody does. Perfect. I mean, that's my fault. <laughs> Microsoft should just cut me a check. I'm saying, like, I do so much work for them, like, in convincing. So, thank you, Ben. <laughs> so, so I'm going to be like the, so. Teams works for me. There's so many ways to communicate that sometimes I can't promise to be like prompt. Um, but then the other thing is, I don't think we've received, have we received each other's emails? I'm going through all my emails from Abdi. And so I don't have, I have Eric Lopez's email, um, but I don't have anyone else's. So I think either if we can um, request that that email be sent tonight with all of our emails, or if everyone's comfortable putting them in the chat right now, I don't know what um, privacy issues, but I just realized they're not in our emails. We're all like, can't, copied. I, I can't put them in the chat because it's like host, host and presenter. Um, yeah. I, is that that's something I want to make public, but I'm okay with emailing you all my email and my phone number so that we can, you know, do that. 
Also, Marty, you 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 also uh, something came up. So I'm I'm selfishly I'm leaning towards teams because I'm so overly connected to my job and all the things that I'm doing. So if it's if it's a new app, I don't trust in my ability to give it everyday attention like in a something that I'm already plugged in. So I know that selfishly I'm saying teams because it's just an easy look over. I can do teams too because I use that for work as well. So I'm I'm amenable to whatever communication pathway that people um want and maybe this is a good time for us to kind of have a quick informal poll about what would be most beneficial text teams slack and or email um whatever the commissioners would would like to pursue as a way to quickly and efficiently um communicate our our ideas looking at maps kind of an adjudicating boundaries etc and so forth can so, we um Eric, why don't we, since we, most of us can send to the host, who's the host? Is that, is that you, um, uh, Ben? Uh, Taylor is our meeting host. Okay. I've so, been texting Taylor thinking it was all you all. And now I got all my <laughs> commentary and Taylor's like, Ben, no one knows what you're saying. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> so can we just like message like our, like top three priority? Um, to the host and Taylor, you can report back. Yeah, that works. Work? Okay, so let's do that. So in the chat message, send a host your top three things. So it's text, Teams, Slack, email. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> okay. So, and if we were having um, a conversation with with our with each other outside of this meeting we're trying to determine the best way to do that okay. so do you have a preference of email text okay. if you're familiar with teams or with slack which are other messaging apps okay i can make a vote on what i have available okay okay but i can't do it through chat okay do you want to just say it out loud yeah sure i'll tell you it's email So I'm putting in the chat and email. So that's for her and then I'll do my own. Kayla, I apologize that I sounded like a uh, Luddite in, in messaging you stuff, but I hopefully you got what I was throwing down. Can you confirm with me, Taylor, that you got my top three communication picks? Yes, I did get that. <laughs> Thank you, however sloppy I did that. <laughs> You're good. And then who can send us um, all of our contact list? Well, wouldn't Taylor have them? She has communicated with all of us by email. I think it's been Hassan who's done that. Yeah. Hassan will email you all the emails that you've shared with us and the ones that Taylor sends the meeting link to. So we'll get that to you tomorrow. Cool. Can, tomorrow. Can, can, since text is one of the options, can we add our phone numbers to the list of emails being sent? Can we, if you don't have them, do we send them to Taylor if people are comfortable with that? Do we include those in our applications? I can't remember. Yeah, we have the phone numbers that were listed on your application. So if you want a different phone number, let us know. Okay. Are we being complicated, Ben? I, I'll throw out the option. If it would be easier to have more meetings, we can make that happen. Mm. And it does sound like from the conversation, there's interest in meeting on April 7th. But if you, if you want to meet more than the 31st of March and the 7th of April, that can be arranged. You know, I mean, as if we're going to be looking at things, and I'm just thinking of access to technology and comfortability, right? I mean, if 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 adding more meetings for discussion for folks that can access and look maps or engage in the conversation might be the most inclusive. But I also I'm saying more meetings and we know how that lands. <laughs> really love asynchronous communication <laughs> for a lot of reasons and like the meetings are here to make decisions and to i think tussle with tough conversation 
And I think that we should have another communication channel. This is what I liked about Neil's suggestion for us to actually like think about and think through and test ideas so that when we get to a meeting, we actually have something to discuss and we actually can get to a consensus or an idea or a vote about what we want to bring to the city council. Because at this point, I don't think that we've done that type of concept of like, our purpose is to bring a couple maps to the city council. And I think this will help facilitate that. So I don't want more meetings. I want more asynchronous is what my vote is. So, if, if it, for, I mean, using that, right. And, and my apologies if I'm, if, if, if I'm going off roading here, right. But I think part of the process of thinking together is also being that collaboration. And I'm hearing that Anne's only way to communicate is via email. So that's really then that would be then how we should do it so that everybody can think and cooperate, right? And then use the meeting time. But if we go off email, then we're not engaging in an equitable way. Very good point. Very, very good point, Daniel. Sorry Excellent. to be so limited. No, it's age no. has its challenge. <laughs> no, 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 made it much easier for us to decide. <laughs> yeah, because because this is one option. It's really easy. <laughs> it's super could. easy. So one of the things I, I I I want to kind of bring up uh, to Daniel's excellent suggestion here is that if we're going to do email, as we talk through various maps, we change the subject line so that we keep the threads of communication distinct and that we don't start cross talking across those threads. So mm -hmm. let's be amenable and think about that so that we can kind of keep the conversation in a way where we can refer back to it. And if we need to, I'll suggest that we come up with a certain subject line delimiters or, or standardizations. But at this point, what I would say is that as if we're going to be talking about particular maps, put the map name and then what you want to discuss, like map name dash discuss like whatever discussion point do that and if you're going to go off topic create another thread can you because i haven't made a map yet um are you able to provide the link mm -hmm. to that map in it i think that would be really easy so we're not like having to go and search just so it's like yeah, yeah so you need is right there so if you're in the map, there's a share button. If you click it, there's a public link and it gives you a link. You can hit copy and paste it right into your, into your uh, email. Perfect. And in the body though, not in the subject line. I would prefer to have the subject line just be <laughs> the name of the map. Uh, Cause I'll get really Randy really fast. Yeah, so, link to maps just... in the body. Sorry, Daniel. Nope. I just wanted to paraphrase. So we're, so what you're saying essentially, Eric Lopez is that, so every map is going to have its thread. So we're really going to be working across 4 or 5 different email threads, depending on the subject of that. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and what do you have Gmail by chance? Do I have what is your, is your, do you use a Gmail? Uh, if your email that you use is Gmail, you may have access to other apps that would allow us then would allow you also to access the different conversations and it might, you know, facilitate it. And I can swing by and show you how to do a, 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 a Google uh, thing. I do have ahead. a different email that is Gmail. I was trying to separate my life. Okay. Oh, hey, I get that. I, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. But I do have a Gmail. You know what? Let's not overcomplicate this. I think the suggestion of the separate separate threads for each Mac makes sense, and we'll just know to you know that that we're conversing in that way. Cool. Uh, hey Ben, a uh, question: If we are going to be doing this Gmail or email idea, I presume since this would be an inclusive exercise, it would be public record because we would have a quorum. And if that is the case, do would our email addresses be included in the public record? So it would be part of the public record because this is a quorum. Mm -hmm. I would also ask that you include me as city staff and I will work with the recorder's office to get the email thread added into the public record. I think we can re I believe personal contact information, like if it's your home address or your phone number or your email can be redacted. Okay. Um, that does create a workload for city staff. So that 
that's one thing to keep in mind is the more you have these conversations outside of the meeting, the more work it is to redact your personal information. So, uh, sorry, can I jump in really quick? I'm so sorry. I don't have a hand to raise. Um, it is honestly really, really bad for you guys to con conduct any conversations outside of a, a meeting. It looks really bad with transparency. So be really careful with anything you do if you do that. It's really frowned upon with Open Meeting Act, um, conducting any kind of conversations as a quorum outside mm -hmm. of a meeting. If we do it by email and include everybody in there and then allow it to be shared, is that also looked at bad? Even uh, with what you're what you're saying, Michelle, just to be it, can, it depends. I mean, it's not like a huge problem, but it does like Ben says, does get into my, you guys, I'm on the thing. Um, it does get into workload problems, you know, and things like that. The other alternative, and this is to Michelle's point, is you meet as less than a quorum. So if there's a subset of four of you that want to have these conversations through email and then report back at the next meeting to the full body, that is more in keeping with the Open and Public Meetings Act. What I what I view as a hardship here is that we are representing essentially the city, right? And it behooves us to meet in some other capacity outside of official meetings while also presenting information and and uh, uh, aligning with the Open Meetings Act here. Um, because for instance, like Noel doesn't know and Anne doesn't know about the West Side, but I would like to teach her about that. I don't know really about the East Side, but I would like to know more about that. And that sharing of information becomes highly important and meeting less on the quorum, I, I feel is, for lack of a better phrase, like disingenuous in some sense. I don't know that I'm trying to kind of uh, articulate this gray area <laughs> where I think it may be more beneficial to to have that overhead and to provide that as a public record and, and like make it more difficult for us to communicate. So Eric, what the council staff, what the council does is they have small committee meetings, so small group group meetings, so you guys could mix up like some of the east people with some of the west people and you know because i think there is a good majority with you guys of both sides and then maybe you could you know meet two or three of you together mix it up and go and then do it again like mix up different people and go so you you might be a multitude of little group meetings that you could have but you could you know get people from each direction and kind of meet up and maybe maybe still facilitate the questions and things that you want to learn? Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. I have a really skewonky uh, travel schedule for work, and that's why asynchronous really works well for me. And having at my disposal all my colleagues here, all the commissioners here um, helps, but I see where that's a huge gray area, and I totally get what you're saying. Um, and I want to think about that a little bit more. I'm wondering if an alternative idea could be back to the one of the earlier suggestions of meeting more often and having meetings that it's really like that's the the agenda is getting into like the nitty gritty stuff. Like maybe that's on a Tuesday and then on Thursday we present maps or we are even like drawing one together. I'm thinking even with like the West side, we could just go like, we could do a PowerPoint presentation and be like, this is a visual of what we're talking about or, um, because I do want to be respectful to the city staff's time. I do want to share information of like these boundaries and what we're, we're talking about so that it, people can see it. Um, but I do know that the open records, like, if anyone wants to, like, remember the Salt Lake City School Board last year, it can get interesting. And so I want to be super, um, I want to make sure that we're just following in line with, um, with that for, so we're doing due diligence, right? I'm also wondering about the three people who are missing. 
Right. Good point. The three yeah. council persons who are not present. Ben says two. Yeah, so we're we're missing Elizabeth Moray for District Seven, and then Daya Uman for District or at large District Four. Are there we are emailing them the link to the recording, uh, but you're right; they're not aware of your discussions tonight yet, or the field trip that two of two groups will be taking. But they will be at the next meeting to hear your report back. What was that, Eric? <laughs> That's a lot of uh, logistics to consider. And I'm no supply chain, I'll tell you that. <laughs> if, can, <laughs> I'm going to go back like 40 steps. Can we all do what Ann did and focus on our area and bring that suggestion to the next meeting? Because I feel like we can do a lot of fact finding, but it's also like, We've got like two weeks. We can only do so much, you know, of this additional work. And I think we should lean into our strengths of knowing our communities. The biggest hurdle to me is how you kind of divide up District 4 because it's got such an over population for, you know, so it. If we can kind of look at our districts, how they relate to district four, and then potentially, you know, keeping the community council or whatever your desire is for that area and bring that to the next meeting. I think we could hopefully bring all of our, you know, ideas like Anne brought hers tonight, and then we have a compromise we can hopefully work from just because we, we don't have a lot of time. I'm all for it. I mean, that sounds really like logical and makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> what Valerie's proposing. I, the only, the only reservation I have, I like this idea. Don't, don't get me wrong. The only reservation I feel towards it is, um, I want to present a plurality of maps to the, to the city council in regards to this. And I'm, I'm afraid that it's going to winnow us into one map with a lot of like caveats and and stuff like that. And I and I like, for instance, Eric had shown some really great maps. Noel had shown some really great maps. And I feel that if we just focus on the district, we are gonna spend endless amount of times debating what should be included in that map to then make other parts equitable. You know? But I feel very confident in the fact that out of the three maps that Noel showed and out of the three to four maps that Eric showed, I can, I can, we, we can talk about those in a way that I would feel confident in presenting to a city council. So I don't I'm know. wondering, sorry, Eric, I'm wondering though, if you have to do like the, where we need to do, it sounds like the most boundary changes, like for sure can't get around like is two and four and and working with those is just going, you're going to have to manipulate other, right? Like, it's not like you're only going to do, like, if you're looking at your district's relationship to four or to two, it's going to have to push out and overlap so that you, you're going to have a map, essentially, that all of us will be kind of focusing on similar areas, but with different takes on it, which I do think almost is exactly what's already been done, right? Like, there's like some things like, well, this was kind of interesting and strange up here. Um, so I worked on it, but really two and four is where the most has to, like, we need to take away and we need to like add to right like two four two four and five because five we have to oh, add five. like nineteen like nineteen hundred to to five. I then can I can I recommend uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say my recommendation and you let me know if this is kosher. Um I have read uh recently Springer Publications came out I think in 2020 or 2021 a redistricting guide for people who are going through redistricting processes and um I, it's like 120 pages, and I'd be more than happy to share my copy with with people. 
Um, and I like some of their methodological approaches that tried to get past certain conditions like what we're trying to deal with, right? And what they're proposing in a nutshell within this 125 pages is thinking in terms of like, the census says this, but we wanna think five years ahead. Because again, we have a time box of 10 years. And even though the census says X, we wanna be equitable. And if we wanna also meet the mission of equitability, we should be considering these other factors. And that may, may or may not buck things. And that may help us kind of provide more clarity and guiding principles, because I think a lot of uh, the stuff that we are concerned with as we're talking through this um, can be sometimes self-serving, can be sometimes like thinking about like community council boundaries and things that, that we may not wanna give a lot of credence to in relationship to more equitability. Um, just throwing that out there as ways to consider this and trying to find the best way to consider these maps, you know. I will, you know, my email, if you want it, I can give it to you. Um, I like Marty's idea of coming together with different recommendations um, sort of based on how uh, Anne did it this time around. My only concern, or I, I would say maybe something we have to hash out, is how do we resolve disputes? If I say, no, this is bad, and another co uh, commissioner says, yes, this is good, how do we figure that out? And I think if we can come to a rule set on that, a majority, you know, counselor as a veto, something like that, I think that could work very well. My concern with that is that we don't have any other further grounding principles besides 2020 census and 23,371 or whatever it is in each district. And I think that there are other principles in play that if we want to say that there's equitability across the city that we want to take into consideration, which also cascades other considerations such as um, growth, such as in five years, what is the, the voting population gonna be when kids get into voting age, things of that nature. And those are things that are more intangible that would help really guide us in saying, these things are, are disputable versus not disputable. Because when we talk about this, uh, like, uh, dispute or conflict resolution within this, one of the things that I've been seeing a lot of the commissioners is like, I know this territory very well, I can't speak to these others. And it's very hard to resolve conflicts within that if we don't have other higher principles that we're gonna be working towards is, is my, my thought process so far. But I like your mindset for conflict resolution. I think you're, you're right there, Nina. But surely- Go ahead, Ann. If we have some basis to begin adding the additional ideas, if each of us has worked on our area and we bring that in and then we talk about the other things that Eric wants us to have, including we don't have to go back over, we can continue to consider those in relation to the maps that we are, are finding most um, reasonable to all of us from the perspective that each of us has about our knowledge of our particular area. Somehow we just seem to be too far away from a central place when we could bring some parts of us together and then add these additional concepts and think about the map and changing it or not, or changing it this way or changing it that way. Well, it becomes like my My, my hesitation with that recommendation is the fact that 
I can't dispute what District 4 is telling me. I don't have any other grounding principle to say that it is one way or the other. So if you're telling me that it must resolutely be this, what am I to say? And the same oh, thing with. <laughs> I don't think any of us are saying it must resolutely. We're saying this is our best at, at this point. This is our best understanding of how it could work. Now, let's fit those pieces together and see how they fit. And these are the reasons that they would or would not. And consider those additional aspects of why they would or would not fit together. I, I look at the map that you presented, Anne, and I like I I don't know enough to dispute you further than saying like, yeah, that could definitely work, but I definitely had pointed out just from looking at the map statistics that like it didn't address district two or district one. But then it didn't attempt to. That was the point. It was not attempting to, it was presenting only a portion of how these three districts could be worked out and add to and take away from. But that but that's my point is that this map represents the entire city. And I I look at that map and I can't say how to, to size it to fit a wider perspective. And then we'd have to task someone with saying, like, take all these particular particularities from people thinking about their own districts and now create a map. And that's not what we're here to do. We're here to think about the entire city and we're here to rely on our colleagues and our commissioners to think through that aspect. And I want to point again back to how great I think, however imperfect, Neil and Eric Kenny's maps were, because as I was talking through it with them and or as we were talking through it with them, we could say, hey, what did you think about this district? Why did you do this? And then we could talk about very particular aspects, like that little horn. Uh, that Neil had pointed out in the sector uh, in the, that he put to the district two that really feels like more like district one, but it wasn't a it wasn't a deal breaker. It was just something that we could then point to, and that's that is where I'm, my mind's at, at at this point. So I think being mindful of time, we're already over. Um... I don't feel like we've come to any consensus consensus. Like, I'm not even quite sure what our next steps are at this point. So I propose that we, um, I mean, we can do a couple of things. Like we can all do what Mallory's suggestion is, and then all of us can also work on a map for the whole city and then present them next week. At this point, though, like you've brought up principles, which is a whole new topic that we haven't even discussed or outlined. So, um, I, I just think like we have to have more meetings. Like I would say, if we wanted to talk about principles, we need to have a meeting that focuses on that because that's like a big conversation. Um, I'm not opposed to Mallory's suggestion. I mean, I think. I don't think it's going to be as black and white, maybe Eric, as you're, you're thinking, because like, I can't imagine doing district 2 without. Making changes all over the city, and I think there's some districts that really may not need that much. Ch change, you know, like, I don't know that it needs to be like a ton of time needs to be spent. And I don't know, I'm just going to say, like, district 7, like, I don't know, but I haven't looked at it. So, like, that's not me saying it doesn't need any effort. Um. And then I think if we disagree on something, like that's what we're all here for, right? Is like those of us who do know District 4 speak to it and say, like, I feel strong enough I could speak to every district because I feel comfortable enough and I have enough opinions that I can like share that information. So I trust that we will come together in a democratic process and we will all like have to vote and we'll have to push and pull and compromise. Um, but I think for next steps, we need to be like, are we doing a field trip? Yes or no. Are we doing an email chain? Yes or no. And like, and then we need to adjourn. So, fair, fair. Thank you. Thank you for that. Marty. Marty, so to recap kind of what I'm hearing, I, I am hearing more meetings and not an email chain based on both, you know, the public record and then also what the impact on city workers, right? 
uh, the city staff, sorry. Uh, but then also, so that would mean that we have those two other Thursdays that we skipped that we would want to add. I'm also hearing the need to consider another day, and I believe it was you or someone else who said maybe we discuss on Tuesdays, getting to the weeds, and then on Thursdays, it's more of like, you know, the larger discussion. Um, so, you know, maybe we we do to poll Thursdays. Do we do to poll what Tuesdays we add between now and then to maybe do do some of that? Um, and oh, and regarding the field trip, I also heard that we need to do it with enough time for people to go. So if it does happen, it can't be this weekend. Or if we don't have a quorum, but also maybe we just need to do things that are all like worthy of the open meeting rules, right? So how much time do we need for public notice of a meeting? Is it 24 hours? It is at least 24 hours notice okay. and based on this discussion, we will add a meeting on April 7th, that Thursday, and we'll do the same 530 to 730 time slot. Great. We have no, never mind. I was gonna say we have shorter time on Tuesdays. Is that land better adding another meeting? But the what we what and I'm going back to I believe Neil, you said this, right? The two hours is not really giving us enough time to get into into the details. So I'm sorry to take Tuesdays off the table, but the council, the council. votes on Tuesdays. So none of, of the staff here today would be available on a Tuesday because we can only be in one place at once. Well, and that's another piece of it. Like what Ben, like if we threw Wednesday into the mix, is that I know I want to respect your time is an availability for you and your team as well. But so it sounds like interest in getting a third meeting between March 31st and April 7th is an answer that we don't need to come up with right now. That is something Hassan and I can put in a doodle poll, send out to all the commissioners, and then we will find the time that works best during those seven days in between. Does any other commissioner think we need to meet an additional time before that period, or is everyone okay with those three towards the end? I'd say for another meeting or even if it's with a small group, it doesn't have to be the whole commission um, prior. I do think that the considerations uh, that Eric is talking about and the considerations that are less um, emotional uh, need to come together. Uh, a little more often than one or two times. Do you think, Ben, that you could, as your team, like think of like a, a one additional, like a Wednesday or a Monday or something and do a doodle poll and we can just see how everyone lands on having another meeting that's where we kind of focus on weeds? <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm hearing a third meeting in addition to March 31st and April 7th is what the majority is interested in. So we will see what the doodle poll results tell us as I best. See. Got it. Okay. My brain I, is I, done. I, I teach until six on Wednesdays and 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 Tuesday, Wednesday. And so I, I, I won't be available until after six. So just know I'll be rolling in late and maybe with my, you know, hair upside down. I don't know. And I'll put it out there on the record. I won't be able to make the seventh, but I'll be happy to catch up over, you know, video. So April 7th is going to be the last commission meeting. So if you're not able to make that one, it would be helpful to know in advance what your preferred maps are at that point. So we can say commissioner Vandermost has these two or however many as his recommendation, his vote. So as staff, we've got a doodle poll to get to you. And we will update the two commissioners that were not able to join us tonight. And then we'll also uh, email you all with each other's emails. If you do wanna go ahead and have field trips, 
uh, you're certainly welcome to do that, but keep it at four people or less. I'm all for the field trip anyway, or the points and I can drive to them. I, I can drive. If you give me the points, I can drive to them. The, the last thing I would say is just a reminder that there is no perfect map. There is no such thing. And I think it's a bit of a, a safety valve for the commission to remember you can recommend multiple maps. You don't necessarily have to come together and say, this is the map that we all want. If it's this map is better on these principles and these two other maps are better on a different principle, that's great. Giving the council a few options is still success. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Make a motion right. to adjourn. Well, yeah, yeah. I hey, are you the chair? Or am I the chair, Mark? I'm sorry, I'm hey. so burnt. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, do we have can we push past the pending and unfinished business of the CHPCH redistricting maps and the minimal change maps? Is everybody okay with that? Okay. Uh, new business, you guys have saw the spreadsheets for district builder maps 14 uh, from March 14th to March 21st. Is everybody okay with those? Okay, Marty, you can do this adjournment. I, I will pass the baton to you. Let us adjourn tonight's meeting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys. Good night. Good night, everyone. Great work today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And can you hear me? I can. Some of this will need some.